Another week down, and this week has been somewhat uh, eventful, actually. Um, Monday to Thursday were the midterms, which actually was not... You know, on the schedule it says Monday to Thursday, but it's actually there were only three of them, only. Um, Monday and Wednesday and Thursday. Monday was the uh, listening midterm test, and it was just basically double the length of a regular listening exercise. Tuesday, Tuesday was conversation like normal. Uh, Wednesday was basically the conversation midterm test. And no, 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 it wasn't actually. That I w what was, was that was what I expected it to be, but it wasn't. Basically, Wednesday was just a big uh, a achievement test, like regular, the Friday test, but on a Wednesday. Um, it was one page longer than before, but otherwise it was the same. But uh, in that test, I, which I think went fine, but I don't know how well. But we'll see. I haven't got the results yet. Um, there, I, I, did, I make one made one realization that. During the 45 minutes or so that you have to complete the test, I think you can make it one hour if you basically skip the 15-minute break that you're supposed to have after, afterwards and go over time. Uh, I realized that I don't have time to use kanji in those tests. Even though I could, I don't have time to do it because if I do it, too much time will it will take too much time. So I just stick to really simple kanjis like oki and miru and skip all the other ones because it's better than... Uh, First of all, there's a risk of, especially in those tests, if if I try a kanji that I don't necessarily have to write, but if I try one and I get it wrong, they'll deduct points. But if I just write it in hiragana, they won't deduct points. So it's a gamble to use kanji anyway, and it's not like I get any, get any extra points for using them. So, Thursday was the reading... Comp no... Uh, Yes, a reading comprehension midterm test, and that I think I did pretty well with because reading is probably my best subject because I've been. That's a lot of what I've been spent been spending my time with for these last few years: reading game stuff and games manuals and strategy guides and that kind of stuff, and trying to understand and looking up stuff. So, like reading is probably the best subject, and. Um, I think that went pretty well. We'll see how well, because I still haven't got the result for that yet either. Pro hopefully today, uh, which is Monday, by the way, because I just didn't have any time yesterday. Um, um, and on the Friday, we went on a school trip. Apparently, once per term, there's a school trip. And this time, we went to, the first time for me anyway, we went to Kyoto Botanical Gardens, uh, which was... Uh, few stations before Koksai Kaikan, so it's like the, one of the more little more north uh, subway stations. And it was just a big garden. Yeah, it had trees, it had flowers, it had a fountain, it had uh, uh, people uh, shellaxing and <laughs> other stuff. A lot of old people, though, because I guess, you know, old people have a lot of free time on their hands. Uh, <laughs> and we got this um, uh, collection of papers, and we were supposed to go... Uh, look for flowers and write the name down, names down, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, interview three Japanese people about the, like their favorite flowers and if they're uh, raising any plants at home or anything like that. And it went fine. It's just, just that we came across one old guy who, while he was nice and he did answer the questions, he talked for like 15 minutes straight. So, like trying to keeping the uh, the concentration level the whole time was pretty difficult uh i i zoned in and out i would i would say uh, but besides the test things didn't of course didn't take up the whole day uh so we kept we doing did more kanji of course uh, m most of the stuff i already know like usual except like Again, some of the drawing order stuff is different from what I've learned, and I don't want to change now. Um, and with like grammar stuff, we did. The one thing that I remember right now is the really confusing uh, swamp of receiving and giving, which is not as easy as agiru and morau. Let me tell you, uh, because it depends on. 
uh, the politeness level. If someone gives me something who is my uh, superior, that's a different word. And if I give someone who's my inferior, so to speak, there's a different word. And it's also the difference between I received from someone and someone gave, or what was it? Someone gave something to someone else. And then if it's from like up and down and... I'll try to do like a quick diagram of that because I, I need it for practice anyway, but it's, yeah, it's a little difficult and confusing to say the least. And when the example sentences don't have watashi wa or whoever it, it's actually happening to, it gets that much easier to guess, sort of. Anyway, right now it feels like guess, guesswork. Hopefully I will uh, learn it in the future. I've had, there's been good weather this week. Uh, it's been a good week in general, and um, oh yeah, uh, now I'm going to move over to games, and there's a lot of them, uh, again, um, I didn't really want to, because actually last week I said I was getting a little tired of running around looking for games, but it just so happened that I actually, on either Monday or Tuesday, I don't remember, I went to the A2 store here in Kyoto again, to buy one more game, pretty much, the Popeye game that I saw, so I went there, I bought that game, uh, I didn't, basically I was like, itching for it a little bit and I want, didn't want it to get away from me uh, because the only other time I've seen it it was 8,000 for for the box uh, also uh, it's, and it's a weird game it's like a mixture between a board game and a side scroller because like it's kind of like Mario Party but instead of mini games when you get to a certain spaces you go into like a side scrolling level you have to collect hearts or something to beat the stage walking around and on the um, board is like this uh, guy Bluto I guess and some bird and if you they run into you you have to have a little boss fight with them and uh, usually within those you get uh, spinach and get to punch them punch their lights out it's an interesting game uh, but actually when I got that one I after I got it I just st stood again to look at the wall of Super Nintendo games again and uh, as I was looking a guy came up next to me and I looked over to see who it was, and it was uh, not a Japanese guy, it was a foreigner. Uh, so I just kind of randomly asked him, Hey, you looking for anything in particular? And he was like, yeah, a lot of things, actually. And then and I was asking, kept asking him, like, yeah, what are you looking for? Like, maybe I can help you find something, because I've been here three times now. So it turns out he's a big retro game finder and collector, too. And he's on a trip through Japan pretty much with his wife, looking for all sorts of sorts of retro games um so that was fun we basically went through kind of the entire store looking for looking at things and looking for things he's big into shoot 'em ups uh, aka uh, horizontal and vertical shooters which is my worst genre like i'm so bad at those games uh, probably the only uh, genre that i'm worse at is stealth games but yeah and um, so then it happened that when we separated, we um, uh, exchanged Facebooks. And then he wrote me the next two days saying, like, I'm going af after in the evening, I'm going to this uh, hard off back over here and, uh, and then this video game store and like, um, want to come with. And I'm like, well, I first it was like hard off and I've already been to, but like, sure. I mean, he's only early, only here for a few days, so... And he was a really nice person, so yeah, why not? But then, of course, when I got there, there I found some games that I wanted to buy, and the other place too. And then he told me there's another A2 in Tokyo uh, that also, you know, has games, of course, because it's a video game store. So then I, f I can't, I can't let the video game store be here and not go and go and see what they have. So I bought a bunch of more games at like three or four different places. So here are they. I'm going to start with Famicom games. I got three of them. King Kong 2. Ikari no Megaton Punch. Ikari... Yeah, so Megaton Punch of Rage or Anger. And it's, uh, yeah, the King... It's called King Kong 2. There is no King Kong 1, King Kong 1 game. This is more like Gremlins 2 on the, the NES Famicom. Made by Konami. It's overhead uh, punching and rock throwing action. Uh, decent music, decent gameplay, um, really cheap, and yeah, it's by the way, it's called King Kong 2 because it's based on King Kong Lives, the sequel to the 1979, 80, 81, I don't know, something like that, King Kong Remake, so yeah, King Kong 2, 
They should have just called it King Kong. They didn't have to call it... In Japan, by the way, King Kong Lives was called King Kong 2. That's why it's called King Kong 2 and not King Kong Lives. The game with King Kong Lives, Lives would actually have been kind of a better title. Because when you put a 2 out at the end, people assume that there was a 1. So, kind of like Goonies 2 came out in, in Europe and America, but there was no Goonies 1. Even though there was no movie Goonies 2 either. So, the whole thing is confusing. Next, I got Mad City. A.K.A. the Adventures of the Adventures of Bayou Billy, or however that sounds. Here he looks less retarded and more like Crocodile Dundee, which is a decided upgrade. Now, Adventures of Bayou Billy is seen as a shit game for uh, American Western audiences, but uh, because of its really bad uh, beat 'em up parts. But the Japanese version is better, I heard, so that's why I wanted to get it, and I found it for only 500 yen. It has a mixture of beat 'em up uh, and uh, sh like zapper shooting, but you can also just use the crosshair with the D-pad and driving stages. But the Japanese version has like a more stages, has more endings, has uh, more forgiving um, beat 'em up controls. It's just better in all regards. So, lastly on Famicom. Da, 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 Star Wars with. Obviously, blonde Sky Luke Skywalker being black-haired Luke Skywalker in the, within the game. Uh, Star Wars doesn't look like a good game from what I've seen on AVGN, but it does look like a game. It's a platformer, and while it does have one-hit kills, it's still too a little too interesting to pass up completely. And it was, it was about 800 yen, which is uh, decent enough for that game. I've seen it go for more too. So it's also kind of fun when you boot up the game. They made the Namco logo in logo look like the 20th Century Fox logo, and it's called like, if I remember right now, it's uh, Future Creator Namco. So it's like, huh, all right, <laughs> interesting. But of course, there's not like the uh, Fox music is not there, of course. But yeah, okay game still though. Hmm? Biohazard Gun Survivor. And yeah, it's uh, Resident Evil Survivor with light gun support and with the same awful, awful voice acting. But lovely awful. And now for Super Nintendo. I got Kamai Tachi no Yoru, which I already have actually back in Sweden. But since I, don't, I didn't bring it with me, the box especially. And since I'm planning to maybe go to the hotel, the real uh, ski lodge hotel in Japan near Nagano where this game, the photos from this game were, were actually shot... I wanted to have it boxed so I could potentially have the owner of the hotel sign it for me or something. So I need needed to have the box. Magical Taruru Tokun. Now I didn't really like either of the Taruru Taru Tokun games for Famicom, but I did buy the one for Mega Drive, which was made by Game Freak, uh, which uh, makes it interesting. And then this one, and this one on Super Nintendo looks more like the Famicom one, so it doesn't look great. It has. Um, uh, no special controls, really, and uh, one-hit kills. But I, I, at least it was, it was really cheap, so I would just... I, for 350 yens, like, I'll try most anything. So I'll give it a chance before I might get rid of it. If it's, if it's like the Famicom games, I'll probably get rid of it. Space Funky Bob, or B.O.B. An oddly odd platformer, but made by, I think, European developers, probably English, but I don't know. Um, this robot alien guy who, with, I guess he's funky because he says things when you beat the level, and, um, but yeah, it's like, yeah, it, it's decent. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Um, you shoot, you have uh, these module things which gets, lets you, like, jump high or, yeah, it just looks like a decent game. It was only a thousand yen for, yeah. The Great Battle 4. The Great Battle 4, I passed on it. Uh, I Actually, I had it a long time ago, and then I sold it because I couldn't figure out any of the boss fights, which are admittedly really hard to figure out. So I, I sold the game, which turned out to be a little bit of a mistake, because uh, now there, where there, while there weren't at the time, now there are instructions on how to beat those bosses. So I want to find the game, but I've see, then I've, when I've seen it, I've seen it for 1,500 yen or something, and like... I got it so cheap the first time, I wanted to get it cheap this, the second time. But then I was lucky at this one store and found it for 380 yen. It was a little dirty, the cartridge, but not, not too bad. So yeah, now I have that one back. Rock and Roll Racing. 
Rock and roll racing, pretty well known in the the West, but not in Japan. And uh, it's one of those that's like really, it's pretty common in the West, but slightly more all, uh, uncommon in Japan. And I got it for a pretty good price, I would say, one thousand six hundred. And uh, yeah, it's a decent enough racing game, but the the soundtrack is really where it's at. So yeah, that's pretty much why I got it. Ardy Lightfoot, a game that's actually pretty expensive in the West, and I don't think a lot of people know about it in Japan, but I just happened to found it, find it for 1,500, so it looks like a good platformer. You have this little bird that looks like the Bonto bird from Holy Umbrella and walking around with you, and you uh, can push blocks, and you um, bounce higher with your using your tail, kind of like in DuckTales, but you have to like hold down the jump button as you land or something. Um, you can throw him as a, as a weapon, and if you get hit, he disappears, but you can find him later on. So it's basically two hit kills, I guess. Uh, but that's basically like Mario, so that should be okay. Even though I tend to think it's more annoying in other games other than Mario for some reason. But yeah, uh, it looks like a good game, and I was glad I found it. Time for a big one, literally. Mario to Wario, aka Mario and Wario. Complete in box, and I mean really complete. It had all the plastic bags, all the uh, manuals, uh, the uh, the mouse underneath the mouse was actually the little cover thing, and there was this plastic thing that I think it's meant to remove dirt from the, under the mouse or something. So it's really complete, and uh, it was I don't remember what, it was one thousand five hundred or something. And like I w had the m mouse once before, but it was with Mario Paint, and I get sick of Mario Paint pretty fast. But this is actually a game with eight worlds and everything. You, uh, Mario walks around with a bucket on his head. And you play as the mouse pointer fairy guy who clicks and unclicks platforms for him to work walk on so he can get to the end of the level, get freed from the bucket by Luigi just to have another bucket fall on him on the ne very next stage. It seems like a good game. I actually will try and play that one through. Now, before the last Super Nintendo game, I want to jump in with one Game Boy game, Kid Dracula. Doesn't want to focus, I guess. Kid Dracula. I have the Famicom game, but the Game Boy game is slightly different, which is makes me want to play this game. It actually plays pretty much like the Famicom game. The only difference is really is oh, well, a couple of stages are different and that kind of stuff. But it has stereo sound, which is not always nice, and uh, the screen is a little more zoomed in, of course, because they want to keep the proportions the same, kind of like the Mega Man games. Which use, in the Mega Man games made made it a lot slower and clunkier, but Kid Dracula was always kind of slow anyway, so I think that will work out fine. Now for the the Super Nintendo game, this was the prize of the uh, looking around. I would say it's a Nintendo Power Power cartridge containing Super Punch Out, which never came out in Japan other than on this cartridge. A common enough game to find in America or Europe, but as I said, in Japan never come out on regular cartridge, and uh, finding a good game on those cartridges is really a gamble. Uh, but this one I did, and it, was, uh, it wasn't cheap really, but it wasn't that expensive either. So I've seen it for more than double on eBay, so that was good, and it's a good game too. Uh, now I have a couple of things that aren't games that I also bought, but they are very much so game related. I so shall show them first and unpack them later. It's the Majima Goro perfume, a licensed product from Yakuza Kiwami 2 that actually actually isn't released yet. It re releases on December 17th and it's only mid-November. But yeah, Majima perfume and a thing, a box with something in it. I'll show you what now. It's a tie. I don't usually wear a, a suit or a tie or whatever, but when I do, I wear this Mario tie. Officially licensed product made by Bandai, <laughs> not Nintendo. Uh, it just looks like any any old tie, but it has a little Mario down there, and then in the back where no nobody would ever see it, another Mario. Now for the perfume. Oh. Focus? No? No focus. Majima on the front and nothing on the back. There's also a white one. The white one has like the snake part of his tattoo in in here and 
I wanted the black one uh, anyway because it's like black and gold and has Majima's uh, tattoo here in the front and center. And actually, this one smelled a little better too. The uh, the white one was more uh, subtle with the smell, a little um, uh, less of it. But this smells better. With this, I smell mainly, and that's a Rocky Two reference. If you don't get that, get that, you haven't watched Rocky Two, I guess. Oh, and one final thing that isn't a game at all, and it's not even related to a game. It's Justice, a movie, DVD, it's And Justice for All, the Japanese version. It has Japanese subtitles and American text, American talking or speaking, whatever. I re It's one of my absolute favorite Al Pacino movies, and I will I will try to watch it with a Japanese person, person, person at some point, because they want, deserve to see this movie. Justice... It's too bad they didn't have they used the they didn't use the poster where he's pointing, uh, which you know was the possible inspiration for um, Phoenix Wright. It would be really cool to interview to ask someone from Capcom if this movie at all um, uh, inspired Phoenix Wright because he has strong sense of justice and he actually says hold it at one point. So not to mention uh, the the point thing. Uh, so yeah, great movie. Hopefully we'll get to introduce it to a Japanese person at some point. So, another good week in Japan. And now, the next week is coming up. And it has regular stuff. Uh, I watched Italy and Sweden play, and Sweden won. So we actually have a good chance now to get to the World Cup next year. Which would be awesome to watch the World Cup here in Japan uh, as a Swedish person. If Sweden is in there, it would be like... What if Japan and Sweden got into the same group? That would be even better. Or if we met in like the round of 16 or something. Uh, tomorrow I have a meeting with the school teacher, which everyone has. It's kind of like a mini evaluation, like how's it going type of uh, conversation.